Hello and welcome to this episode of The Federal. I am Naveed Anjum and today our guest is Amir Shahul, author of Heavy Metal, How a Global Corporation Poisoned Kodai Kanal in Tamil Nadu, which has recently been published by Pan Macmillan India. Amir, thanks for joining us, joining us on this show. Thanks, 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 Navai. Uh, 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 thanks, uh, Federal, for uh, 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 giving me this opportunity. Thank you. It's a, it's a very significant uh, book, Amir, uh, considering uh, you know the scale of the catastrophe um, and the kind of impact on uh, you know the um, hundreds and thousands of people left. Uh, uh, before we begin in earnest, I would just like to introduce um, Amir uh, to our viewers. Amir uh, Shahul is a public policy leader. He has uh, worked as a journalist for several years with uh, news agencies like PTI, AFP. Reuters. He has also worked extensively in the area of uh, green policies and uh, intellectual property rights and reported, of course, extensively and widely on issues ranging from work to workforce. Um, he has also handled policy and advocacy for, uh, for various global corporations like IBM and Nissan Motors. Um, of late, he has uh, you know, worked as a Greenpeace campaigner, um, you know, and he worked for local communities for two years on issues of biodiversity. Currently, he's, uh, he has been promoting this ecologically sustainable community in the foothills of the Peria Forest, that is uh, the range in Vana, Kerala. And I believe, uh, Amir, you're in Kerala only right now. You're joining us from Kerala, right? Uh, no, I'm in Bangalore. Uh, today, I'm in Bangalore, uh, no, I all right. Okay. Okay. So let me begin with uh, with the catastrophe itself, uh, Amir. And uh, as an investigative journalist, to the kind of conclusions that you came to, and this horrifying account of people who were subjected to various kinds of health hazards, and um, the company, of course, came in 1984, and it's uh, it's very interesting to see uh, you know the trajectory of uh, how things unfolded in a way, uh, because 1984 was also the year of uh, Bhopal gas tragedy. And today, as we speak, uh, Supreme Court today has rejected the uh, center's plea for uh, this extra compensation of 7,844 crore uh, to the victims of the Gopal, uh, Bhopal, Bhopal gas tragedy. And um, I wanted to understand from you, uh, Amir, uh, once this was noticed, uh, I mean, of course, it didn't uh, happen immediately. It was only much later, I think sometime in 2001, right, when the uh, when it became, uh, you know, this global attention was, uh, you know, a spotlight uh, was thrown on it. Uh, I wanted to understand, uh, you know, the kind of cover, uh, you know, acts of, uh, you know, these acts of various uh, omissions and commissions by, uh, you know, a corporate like Hindu Sun Liver when the, you know, case uh, came to the public notice. <clears throat> so, uh, you're right. Uh, so the factory uh, began its operation in 1984. Um, it continued uh, 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 its operations uh, till 2001 without any problems. <clears throat> and uh, all the while continuing the practices of uh, emissions and waste disposal. And uh, these are very dangerous waste and emission which people uh, around the factory and people who are working in the factory uh, wasn't aware of that. Um, Emission, you know, as you as you would see in most of the companies, there could be emission. You will see a, a you know very a high mast, a, 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 a few hundred meters, and from the high mast, the um, emissions would come. But so therefore, it's very visible and very clear that uh, there is an emission coming out. Um, and in the, there are factories where the warning signals are given, the emissions are coming out. Uh, but here is a case where the emission, the, the mercury emission was not noticeable. <clears throat> the re very reason why, why the company set it up in Kodai Canal was uh, mercury evaporates about temperature of 20 degrees and, uh, and so. Um, so if you set up in a, in a climatic condition which is below, uh, average temperature is below 20 degrees, um, your uh, raw material, which is mercury, will not get lost. Um, but irrespective of that, you know, even in Kodai Canal, uh, day temperatures vary and the seasonal temperatures vary and many a time it goes about 16, 17, 18, 20 and so on. So whenever it goes, you know, it crosses a certain threshold, the mercury emission happens 
uh, without people can uh, realize it or without, uh, you know, people can notice it. So that emission um, has been going on for almost about 18 years of its operations. Uh, and and uh, similar to that is the waste disposal. You know, um, the initial years when the company was run by Chispera Ponds, um, and and uh, some of the best practices of U.S. Uh, uh, regulations were followed. Uh, the the waste disposal uh, was probably um, uh, uh, you know done in a in a more uh, systematic manner. But I think once Chispera Ponds moved on and Unilever took the com took over the company in um, you know eighty eight. Uh, things completely got changed. That's what we we could presume. That's what we could understand from the records and uh, uh, from the uh, uh, narrations of the people who are in, um, you know victims of the tragedy. Um, so what what subsequently happened is uh, emissions and waste disposal happening um, simultaneously, running into uh, tons of uh, mercury. Um, there have been various accounts of mercury lost uh, during the eighteen years of operation and subsequently. Um, the the two you know one account is the company's account. Company had some some um, consultants working on that to assess that, and they they came out with a figure of some you know um, um, a few few tons of mercury, um, two 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 tons uh, plus. Um, and then the Ministry of Labor conducted a study uh, when the case was when the victim's case was going on in the Madras High Court, and that study kind of assessed that. Almost about 11.5 tons of mercury was lost in the atmosphere. So, which is uh, in the um, uh, you know surroundings, uh, you know, as waste which has gone out to you know faraway locations. Uh, but in total, about 11.5. And um, it, you know, my uh, assessment, you know, I worked with uh, 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 ex workers from the company and uh, uh, some of the people who had access to data within the company while they were working in the company. Um, using the customs records, using the pollution control board records, and so on. So, uh, my collaborative work with some of the you know some of these people, the ex, the, the ex workers, have uh, give uh, you know given me a number of twenty tons, almost about nineteen point uh, five tons kind of uh, mercury lost in the atmosphere. And uh, the uh, seriousness of this would be uh, clear when you look at the kind of damage it has it has caused to the eco ecosystem over there. Many of the, the the species, the flora and fauna, have law, I mean, completely gone, um, disappeared completely. Um, you know, some of the animals which used to frequent the areas, and therefore the that localities were known in the name of that animal. You know, uh, tiger, bear, those kind of animals. So those animals have completely disappeared from that area. So it's it's complete. You know, it's a it's a total devastation over the uh, the many years. And uh, one more point to be noted here is the. Uh, fact that mercury uh, continued to re-emit from the places where it got absorbed. You know, the the, em the emitted mercury was absorbed by the soil, uh, lost in the soil, uh, also absorbed by the the, the uh, factory walls, the trees, and you know, surrounding buildings, and on so forth. So that got that continued to re-emit uh, into the atmosphere. So it, the catastrophe is still not over. While the factory is shut down since two thousand eleven. Uh, the continuous emission of mercury and also the waste of uh, uh, waste mercury which is lying in the factory soil so that continues to be a, a danger for the people who are living there yeah. also when it comes to um, i mean you're right and uh, you also mentioned in the book that how since there has not been any study on the impact of the ecosystem uh, it's difficult to gauge the extent but i'm sure it's going to be very staggering in the sense you just mentioned it's not going to be um, you know that uh, that effects of um, it's uh, they're not going to completely go away from that area, uh, in that Ooh, sense. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So I think you see uh, the um, long term consequences of this is uh, unfathomable. Um, a, the uh, mercury is going to stay. In fact, uh, so there were there were some recent studies which came out in two thousand twenty one, um, subsequent to uh, you know my uh, writing the book. Uh, by a group of scientists from uh, 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 Chennai Anamala University, uh, sorry, Anna University in Chennai. So they found out that they, they, uh, the mercury levels are still very high. Um, and the IIT study, IIT Hyderabad study, which is a good, very good modeling study, they found that um, the soil, the, the soil in the factory and the surrounding areas continue to be a source of mercury over there. 
And uh, they, they said, even if it is remediated, the factory site is remediated now, they, uh, the, the team felt that it would take at least uh, you know, many decades or a century for uh, the mercury to disappear from the, the, the soil and the surroundings. So I think that's the kind of uh, you know, uh, uh, long-term consequence we are talking about. So um, an important question would be uh, because you know the fact itself that uh, the you know the impact was uh, not really uh, you know it did not really come to the fore for many years. Um, a crucial question would be that you know the people who actually fought for this and the people who activists, of course, Greenpeace was at the forefront of it. Um, how do you think that played out? Basically, this whole fight against uh, you know this big corporate uh, by people, many of whom could not even afford the, you know, the, to fight. But uh, then there was this galvanization of these efforts, which led to the, you know, this whole thing of, uh, you know, then, you know, the corporate ending up uh, paying a compensation, which was, I think, the second in the corporate history, uh, you know, after Bhopal gas tragedy of $470 million, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So it's assumed to be the 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 actual number is uh, is confidential because the company has sought the, the 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 court Madras High Court to keep it confidential, and the 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 court agreed to that. So therefore, we really don't know the uh, the quantum. But uh, there are you know um, uh, assumptions and rumors uh, you know running around. So uh, uh, basis that what I heard is. Uh, the number is, uh, you know, the second highest Indian in the in in Indian corporate history. Um, so there were heroes, you know, there were unsung heroes who fought the battle um, um, uh, for many years, and uh, without without uh, uh, you know um, uh, expecting anything in return, they they uh, you know spend their whole lives. There are people who spend their whole lives. Um, there's you know one one such gentleman uh, is is in fact the center of, at the center of this uh, uh, book you know Navro Modi uh, whom I was mentioning in the book uh, so Modi uh, um, stumbled upon the heap of uh, heavy metals in a in a scrapyard when he was going to pick up a uh, you know decorative furniture uh, on an evening and then um, you know he uh, uh, being an environmentalist himself he he uh, pursued it very very uh, earnestly and then he found out the um, quantum of mercury which is lying in the scrapyard and then he um, you know extended the search to the forest areas uh, and he continued the fight you know you could see that he uh, is driving the fight of course there are many other many others uh, who are joining the fight at various uh, you know uh, points in time and also uh, you know the kind of support he's getting from unexpected circles you know there's a um, scientist who was uh, um, going behind a trail of uh, you know, mercury uh, from Hyderabad, landing up in Kodai Canal, uh, doing a phenomenally uh, impressive study, which got uh, global attention and also the, the the clear scientific evidence for the study. So I think the 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 enormity of people who you know jumped into it, who supported the campaign, uh, uh, you know, very um, uh, seriously understanding the. Uh, um, dimensions of the the the, the catastrophe which is unfolding uh, uh, there in Kodaikana. So, uh, in terms of uh, the, uh, the the devastation, uh, you know, Popal tragedy happened overnight. Um, people uh, could easily easily understand that. Okay, overnight the people started dying, people started falling sick, um, and uh, the number. I think uh, you know, in terms of the area affected, the number of people who uh, either succumbed to uh, death or to injury, uh, you know, or, or uh, uh, you know, um, um, uh, um, became ill uh, for a long period of time. So those those are uh, pretty big numbers. But in this case, the, the Kodai Canal case, the tragedy was unfolding over eighteen years. Um, so and the people then the victims were not really aware that there is a tragedy uh, which, which which was happening, and many of them were victims themselves without realizing realizing that the they were the victims of a, an industrial tragedy. So that's the the key difference. And um, the various reports, in fact, uh, the the Ministry of Labor report courts uh, the the affidavits which is submitted to, uh, uh, for the hearings of the Ministry of Labor report. Um, caught some, you know, 28 people who died in the um, uh, period of 18 years and plus. And uh, there are uh, various numbers, you know, there are uh, people who, call, you know, when you, when you reach Kodai Canal and talk to people, uh, you know, you could get much bigger numbers. Um, uh, unless you have some kind of an authentication, we can't really uh, 
talk about it but i think uh, the the casualties if you if if there is a study which goes in uh, in depth and uh, you know pull out the details pull out the hospital records and pull out patients records and then you know try to link it between a, a health condition uh, to a long term mercury exposure then i think uh, you could get a three digit numbers or more one can imagine that the you know the fight would not have been easy considering the lack of judicial provision which of course that's something that you mentioned in the book and uh, how so there are two questions here uh, how this judicial provision in terms of bringing the book bringing to book a uh, corporate who is who is, who is accused of uh, such a criminal negligence uh, so that is one the, the the judicial provision how that has changed and also this uh, whole new era of um, corporate responsibility and corporate uh, you know uh, how their sort of accountability how they're much ha have they been made much more accountable now than they were in say the beginning of the century uh, not really in fact uh, it's very disappointing uh, on the contrary there's been um, some changes as you would see uh, even in the remediation in the issue of remediation you would see that the uh, standards of remediation has become lax over a over, over period of 20 years. So, um, uh, I, you know, to, to start with the provisions of uh, litigating against an airing company uh, in India uh, is very poor. Um, there is no provision of prosecuting a company if the company is making a, a, a serious damage or, an, a, you know, um, um, something of this, this sort or Popal tragedy kind of, an, a, you know, a, a mistake. Um, and in in the West, as you know, you could uh, a group of people could uh, uh, file a, a lawsuit and you know ask for a, a class action, uh, uh, you know, punishment or uh, for the. But I think, and unfortunately, we don't have class action uh, lawsuit provisions in our you uh, know uh, 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 statutes. So I think the 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 uh, even the counsel who was involved in this case, Vaigai Ramamurthy, so she was depending on. Um, uh, very, very clear provisions of, uh, uh, you know, writ uh, uh, jurisdiction and so on and so forth. Um, and I think uh, corporate accountability is something which uh, most of the companies is from small to big, you, you would see that they, they preach a lot. Um, corporate governance uh, is another one. And uh, uh, you would see at the end of the day how they perform in, uh, you know, for insider trading to many various other things. Corporate accountability is much bigger, uh, you know, at, at least in corporate governance. You probably don't endanger the lives of people, but in corporate, you know, if if you don't have a proper accountability and a liability fixed on the hiring companies, uh, a provision to fix liability on the hiring companies, then I think it could even uh, you know cause serious damage not just to uh, the, the 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 factory or its surroundings, but even to the human beings who are um, either involved in the factory as an employee, employee or or a neighbor. So I uh, the accountability standards therefore has to change. And there should be a serious discussion on how the the, the, the accountability can be these account, accountability can be fixed on the airing companies, and some of the uh, stricter provisions should should come in. Um, the unfortunately, what's happening is we all want uh, uh, you know more companies to come in, invest in, and uh, start more production, uh, create employment. All that is fine. I think everybody wants that. There is no second thought about it. We want corporations to survive here. We want employment creation. So all of that is uh, you know perfectly fine. We all uh, agree with that. Uh, but I think uh, what we also need is the companies, the corporations, to do business in a uh, a, a manner which would not endanger the lives of people and and the and the surroundings where they operate. And unless you have the people and their surroundings, the company will not be, exist there at all. So therefore, uh, let the companies do their business. We all welcome them. We'll support them. But let them do in a manner which would not endanger the lives of people who walk in the company or in the surroundings, and also damage the environment uh, which it uh, you know it, it's occupying. Absolutely. Um, I was also wondering about, um, you know, the, the way you went about it. I mean, there must have been extensive research, uh, you know, uh, stories of individual, some of the accounts that you begin the book with, and you mentioned those individual laborers who worked with the company, their stories, and they're absolutely horrifying the way what happened to them, you know, these cases of kidney, kidney failures, cases of uh, people suffering Alzheimer's, you know, cases of people dying so young at the age of 23, 25. So um, I, I was wondering if, uh, how did you go about documenting it all, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and sort of uh, 
uh, you know, this, this uh, ensuring that, you know, you cover all the aspects of uh, how sure. this tragedy unfolded. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I had uh, multiple roles uh, 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 in relation to the uh, Kodai Canal issue. One, um, you know, early days when I visited the locality as a journalist. Subsequently, I uh, got directly involved in uh, working as a Greenpeace uh, campaigner uh, on the ground, working with the communities, with with uh, with uh, the, the ex-workers of the factory and the, the neighborhood people. Uh, activist and environmentalist from uh, Chennai, uh, from Tamil Nadu, and from around the country and the, around the world. And thirdly, when I once I moved out, moved on from Greenpeace, um, I kept in touch with the people, uh, the local community, and the ex-workers of the factory, and also the campaigners, environmentalists uh, who were involved in the campaign. Um, so that I continued for for almost about two decades, and um, um, so this, I, in fact, my uh, many of the, many of these uh, victim stories have come from my own. Uh, interactions with them uh, while I was there in Kodai Canal and um, um, uh, visiting with some of the ex-workers or the or the, or the local community. Um, and I, I uh, uh, used to take notes. In fact, uh, you know, some of those old notes really helped me uh, to go back and check that. Um, and um, uh, secondly, I you know, I know uh, during the course of my, uh, you know, research, I obviously had to um, collect a lot of official records, you know, some of those uh, um, uh, were with the regulators, with the pollution control board and so on and so forth. So I, I uh, engaged a lawyer uh, out of Chennai who could help me with the, uh, the work, these kind of obtaining documents through RTI and filing applications uh, uh, to courts and regulatory bodies. So I think the, that gentleman named Khan and he did a phenomenal job in getting almost uh, all the documents which I uh, needed. And um, you know, the, beyond that, I, I did uh, extensive uh, search on some of the archives, uh, uh, the library's archives, and um, 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 you know, old records, uh, Greenpeace records, and so on and so forth. So I think it was uh, uh, a good exercise uh, for me because I wanted to make it a very uh, foolproof uh, case. Um, um, and um, in, even my publisher uh, took an extra, uh, uh, you know, uh, effort to ensure that this is uh, a full, uh, you know, completely uh, carefully done. Um, so they, they too did uh, a round of uh, legal reading through a very, very well established uh, law firm in, in, in Delhi, um, who suggested certain parts to be, uh, you know, edited, removed and, uh, you know, not, not to, uh, um, the site and not to use anything without citation. So we ensured that anything, everything which we are talking about has a proper um, uh, records behind it, um, which is which is accessible to uh, the publisher and to me. So I think um, is, therefore uh, what, what I've presented to the readers is a, a clear case uh, which is on the records. There is very little off the record. I mean, probably nothing off the record, but um, if you if you try to read things between the lines and then go beyond and find things off the record, then I think the the devastation which you find my in my in the in my book could be much bigger. Um, so th therefore, what you're seeing is only on the record uh, material, not off the record material. Absolutely. In some sense, it is actually just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, the real sense of uh, the devastation, as you're saying, would be perhaps much more higher and. Uh, the intensity of it, the, the, the scale of it. That's true. I yeah, agree with you. I, I also wonder if today, you know, if, if uh, uh, public uh, policy experts and, uh, and, and professionals like you uh, and, uh, you know, and, uh, and social activists, uh, those who are working in this area, are they, are they better equipped today to fight such a fight in the sense that uh, India has got uh, increasingly corporatized now? I mean, you have seen that uh, you know, in various ways, the you know the, the, the PSUs have been you know the, in in the sense the corporates have taken over and the various ways that uh, you know the role of uh, a corporate has sort of come to uh, be a highlight in our lives. So how, are are we more equipped to if such a thing happens, God forbid, are we more equipped to fight such a fight? Um, uh, getting support from the corporate, or would there be a similar pattern of um, behavior repeated all over again so um see i think um, it's a, 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 a point of caution um and in fact uh, you know the answer would be no uh, you know if you ask me a straight answer it would be no 
Um, you know, uh, the situation under which uh, the uh, tragedy was, uh, uh, you know, unmasked in 2001, and uh, for the next 20 years, um, the the uh, the f f the fight was uh, done by the the, the lo local community and uh, very poor local community. I would say they would they would they don't have any resources, but they still they fought it. Uh, it was under very uh, inconvenient circumstances. Very um, you know, um, but I you know uh, one thing which probably uh, could give a, a pass mark is um, some of the support which they received from the central government at that point in time. Um, you know, when uh, the, uh, the Madras High Court appointed a committee and that, co that committee did not find anything great, um, uh, the central government stepped in and appointed another committee, which is a, which is a committee uh, by Ministry of Labor. And that committee did a phenomenally good job. And uh, the, the court accepted that report. Uh, and and uh, based on that report, the, co the court came to certain conclusions uh, um, as to what, what should be done. Uh, and of course, the, the final judgment hadn't come. Before that, the court, there was a settlement. There was an out-of-court settlement. So um, the state government, um, I think it was more to do with the regulator uh, pollution, the Tamil Nadu Pollution Control Board. And again, there was great support from the Tamil Nadu Pollution Control Board for the first couple of years. You know, as, as I mentioned in the book, uh, till certain period when there was a very efficient officer at the hell, at, at the top of the the board, um, there was there was good support. But then it became uh, a, a little, uh, uh, you know, insufficient in terms of the workers, uh, the, the uh, victim support. Um, and uh, the fight will continue irrespective of these bottlenecks. You know, these are th these are uh, circumstances which, in any way, uh, expected in these kind of situations. Uh, I think um, you know uh, probably one another thing which I could I could uh, mention here or or uh, you know uh, 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 applaud the the, the uh, company is that uh, they. Uh, um, did not behave in a manner of some of uh, the, the 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 their Indian counterparts. You know, probably if it was an Indian company, uh, things could have been different. Uh, we wouldn't have seen uh, even an end result in such case. But I think uh, the the company, the uh, being a global company uh, with some uh, you know global practices uh, being followed at uh, you know UK and in uh, Netherlands. So I think um, yeah, they. Uh, uh, I mean, obviously, they they uh, uh, you know tried their best to to do certain car ups, but I think um, beyond that, they did not resort to any unethical practice in terms of dealing with the the victims or the ex workers or the people who are fighting uh, against them. So that's a, that. I think you know I should give them a pass mark on that. Uh, that that therefore we are seeing some good results today, and uh, the there's a number of studies which are coming out. Um, the you know the the an organization like Department of Atomic Energy went ahead and uh, done two studies on the on the the, the issue which were the earliest studies and kind of uh, milestone studies as far as the, the issue is concerned. And uh, now it, you know it's every every six months or every four months you see a new paper, new sci in a in a uh, respected scientific journal coming out of Kodaikanal issue. So uh, that is actually uh, you know uh, strengthening the 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 uh, body of evidences against the company uh, on the issue. So therefore, I think this is uh, a, um, you know, a, a benchmark for the Indian corporates uh, as to what not to be done. And there could have been you know, many more similar uh, you know, instances happen, you know, happening in the last four, you know, many decades or other, many other parts of the country, but we don't see the bottom of that. But here is a case where we have almost seen the bottom of it. Uh, still, you know, more needs to be done. So uh, the campaigners are on the ground and the, the remediation is going on. Um, so uh, um, they don't want the remediation, uh, the washed out mercury to be falling into their land. So uh, they're, they're protesting that. So, it's, you know, um, and also I think the, the second part of it, we should also give a, a pass mark for the company operating in South India. Uh, in you know south of India, probably I mean I'm, I don't have any uh, south north um, you know discrimination, but I, I I would still still say that you know if the factory was located probably in a uh, different location than Tamil Nadu or uh, this part of the world, uh, then probably uh, this kind of a you know uh, a, a end of the story would not have been possible at all. In North India, it would have been much more worse. But that's what you're trying to say, right? <laughs> 
Yeah, I see. Uh, we, I mean, we probably would not have would have would not have got an end result like this, where uh, the company is nailed. There is a court, you know, settlement out of court, um, and and it would have been probably uh, you know um, um, uh, uh, washed under the uh, the linen. So you wouldn't have known uh, what what really happened there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just two more questions, Amir, and then we'll wind up. Uh, we are also running out of time. So one thing about, I mean, the, just uh, link to what we. We're just discussing about uh, that would you if you look at the story of this catastrophe i mean would you say that there was a sense of closure in the, in the sense that you know the victims actually uh, you know did meet justice or at, at least there was some semblance of justice and uh, secondly um, that you know from here on uh, you know uh, what is going to be for, for let's just uh, discuss the you know the state of tamil nadu and where uh, you know would would it be much more difficult for corporates to circumvent those uh, uh, guidelines of health hazards of the public uh, or is it more has it become much tougher in that sense more tough that yeah so i think uh, you know uh, in terms of closure for the victims um I, I i i have a different view uh, there is a settlement there is an out of court settlement which happened um, and most about 591 uh, ex-workers of the factory received some sort of compensation, uh, which is good good for them. You know, as uh, many of them, most of them who were suffering from illnesses, uh, they could uh, you know cover their health expenses and um, uh, uh, meet some of the urgent needs. Uh, those kind of things. That's fine. That's kind of okay. But I think it's not just ending there. Uh, there are one set of victims who are partially compensated. I think, uh, you know, as you as you were seeing in uh, Bhopal many years later, you know, people realized that the comp compensation was not uh, adequate enough for them to meet their long-term, uh, you know, needs uh, in terms of hospitalization or medical expenses and what's on. Um, the second part is the, the, the victims are not just, or, or victims cannot be restricted to 591 people. Uh, the 591 victims we are talking about are the people, uh, the ex-workers of the factory who have, uh, you know, worked at the factory some point in time or the other. Um, the factory was situated on a on a plot of 22 acres of land. Uh, mercury was going into the soil, uh, dispersing into the atmosphere. Uh, you know, um, uh, the factory has a you know, boundary wall. Uh, the the mercury doesn't stop on the boundary wall. You know whether it's uh, in the soil or in the air. You know it it transcends. It it moves. Uh, you know across. Um, so it in uh, some of the studies. You know the recent studies which have come out also showing that uh, the mercury has you know gone far and wide uh, by air, by soil, by water. Uh, you know by by these means. So the, the victims are a larger population out there in Kodaikanal, and uh, that's what I was suggesting to. Uh, many of the people, someone needs to go there and do a periodic epidemiological survey, some medical camps, and to understand uh, the, the the health problems of people who are suffering from, uh, uh, you know, who are, who are living there, and then uh, bring in some experts who can understand this and who can who can analyze it and say that okay, these symptoms could be related to long-term exposure to mercury through air or through water or your uh, you know uh, uh, you know direct exp so that that kind of a uh, 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 you know, uh, medical assessment coupled with international expert who can understand it. And we don't have any medical expert, uh, uh, you know, who can really connect this uh, and the other. Uh, the doctors who are there either in uh, uh, Kodaikanal or in the nearby uh, towns, they're not equipped to uh, uh, do anything beyond a simple diagnosis. They can diagnose, say, uh, if this is a, a renal failure or a, or, a, or a neurological problem. But how does that neuro neurological problem occur is not in the realm of that particular, you know, medical ex you know, the medical doctors over there. So for which we need experts. So I think uh, this uh, uh, goes much beyond the asking. Um, the the, the uh, closure, as you as you as you ask, I think it is it's not closed. In my opinion, it's still not closed. I think uh, you know more need to be done. Um, by the regulators, by the company, and uh, you know, um, the, the, there's a greater demand from the people over there. Um, unfortunately, they they also want to move on. You know, they 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 feel that it's been going on for 20 years. You know, our lives have been, um, you know, destroyed or ruined. I think uh, we need to live on. So I think uh, all of this is 
you know, bringing us to a situation where all of us want to close, you know, want a closure and whatever, whatever is on the table now to be treated as a closure. So therefore, uh, you know, people say that, okay, let's, let's close it and move it, move on. Um, but in, in, in every respect, it is not a closure, uh, more needs to be done. Absolutely. And the second bit about this corporate supplementing the health hazard guidelines. So I see um, that's again a, a, a cause of at most concern, you know, um, in, in, uh, uh, over a period of time, and you know, in the last uh, couple of decades, we've seen that the um, laws have become very lax uh, um, to, as I was mentioning earlier, to encourage industries to generate employment and produ increase production. Um, in the process, the uh, safety guidelines have become a casualty. I think um, there, there, there have been multiple efforts to strengthen these guidelines, but unfortunately, uh, the guidelines are not getting strengthened on one side. And the second part is the implementation, the execution of that guidelines are not uh, happening as, as it should happen in other countries or, you know, some of the, the developed countries. So, so we are, you know, in every respect, we always say that, you know, we are a developed country, we are a five trillion economy going to be. Uh, except on this aspect. On this aspect, we don't want to be a Norway or a Sweden or a, or, or a you know, uh, uh, US standards. Uh, but every respect, every other respect, we would say that, you know, we are a developed country. So I think the, the message, therefore, is on, on safety guidelines, on uh, hazardous practices, on, uh, you know, industrial practices. We certainly need to be on par with some of the best countries in the world. Um, so, uh, you know, be it, uh, be it US, US or Norway, you know, some of the European countries, I think let's look at that. And uh, while we aspire to be a 5 trillion, uh, you know, economy and a, and a uh, uh, developed country, let's also aspire to be a developed country in terms of industrial safety, safety of people who are working in the factories, um, the hazardous practices and the industrial practices. Well, um, on that note, thank you so much, Ami, for joining us. Subscribe to the Federal's YouTube page for more interesting updates.